play with her. Yeah. And then some right. like they're uh, smart and then special and they know. They uh, know the buttons too. Oh, yeah. It's really fun. Oh, yeah. Like, I want to do it. I want to do it. You're just saying no. Yes. Does anyone want to share? Do you want to share? You know, it's really good. Yeah. That one's tricky. Those brownies were so good. They were very good. Thank you. I was on the phone with her yesterday. My daughter's gluten free, so those were regular brownies. So I was like, oh, well, I thought you were going to say they're gluten free. Those are delicious. Um, okay, does anyone want to share? I think that the, I know, yay, Dee. I was going to say, I think these are positive to share because so many people's ideas are so creative and different, so it's really, it's really awesome. Okay, ours is, um, she doesn't yeah. like to share, Maria doesn't like to share toys, and she likes to bite if she wants something. She doesn't use her words. That's Katie, too. Tell me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're aware of this. So, we talked about, um, Langer tried to take the toy, and then going to intervene with the child, and see, well, we're going to, um, what do you call it, um, prop the kids to... Tell her, no, that's my toy, I had it first, and take it back. The other child should come and give the toy back. First, okay. because we don't want to, a hundred times, no, to give the toy back, the toy back. <coughs> so we're going to prompt all the kids to, okay, that was my toy, and have it back. Yeah. And then, if she gets very mean and want to bite, when we do, <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm doing it. Um, and then we're going to say, okay, how about, she gets it for three minutes. We're setting the timer, and every time, set that timer. Set that timer. Yeah. yeah. If she knows that she's going to have a tendency to bite, we need to be proactive before the conflict arises. Yeah. That's the best so, case scenario. I agree, especially with biting, right? Because then, once it gets to that exactly. point of their biting, it's now they're in the red zone. Yeah, exactly. And especially with the timer, the nice thing is they sell so many different times. They have 30 second, one minute, three minute. Starting off with that really short one, it makes the kids even more successful because you're totally setting up for them for success because she can wait 30 seconds and she can watch it and it doesn't take very long and she gets immediate gratification yeah. of getting that toy back and then you stretch it out so that, you know, that graph where it talks about recirculating back to evaluate it and redo it, that's where you're saying, okay, she's doing well with 30 seconds, let's stretch it this week to a minute or whatever, but yeah. It's so funny, because you know, you gave me the timer, yeah. one minute or whatever, but that three minute, so I set the timer, and they forget about the toy, they just want to watch the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or we exactly. even have kids exactly. where they, they drop it off, and <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll move on before three minutes, and we'll say, oh, they're done, you can have a turn now, and they're like, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. or the kid that actually like had the toy, they're like, oh, the same one's all gone, here you go. I guess I have to give it to you. Oh, they just throw it like, oh, Yeah, we had a couple of them. That he would sit on the timer and he would just stare at it in between his legs because they're a bigger one. Like, okay, close this for a seat. But the nice thing about, I was going to say, what your activity was, but she can teach the whole class what to do when someone takes your toy. That's just a great skill for everybody to have, and even though one little girl really needs it, you're just teaching the whole class, and so she doesn't have to feel like she's getting singled out at all. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the nice things about these learning opportunities, is they're just embedded for everybody. And then, too, once she masters, like she was saying that 30 seconds, then that's when you go back to circle time and say, wow, you guys are really great at this. You guys have that 30 second timer. I have to make it harder for you. Let's do the one minute timer. You guys are so amazing. And then you're filling your bucket, giving them that positive praise, and then now you're going to up the game again. And just, like she was saying, stretch it out. You can do it independently. I actually right. had two yeah. that are Val Swan today that were arguing over a toy. One of them set the timer. When the timer was done, the kid had to say, oh, the timer's done, and reminded the kid <laughs> that I was watching. And they, they switched it, like, all on their own without my intervention at all. I didn't do a single thing. Now that's amazing. Shh. Nice work, Thank Molly. Good job. So good yeah. last year. Yeah, you both. We had a whole class. <laughs> <laughs> it was all us. Those two hours, three days a week. Yeah. <laughs> two, Lindsay's really proactive, his mom, and so is she, so it really makes all the difference. That's awesome. That's great. Does anyone else want to share? We got the, we got the boy that's spinning. Oh, I got to hear this one. Well, I have a red salad bowl. Yeah. 
So oh. now we're going to let him spit in the red salad bowl, mm -hmm. you know, because it's easily washed in my mouth. And when we talk about what she said, <laughs> you know, because it's red and Target, I love Target. So we're going to put a Target in there. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So we can aim, you know. And then the other thing I kind of thought about is, and we could just put a picture of him spitting, because yeah, he'll snap for me, you know. He'll yeah. Snap the, the picture. So we could do that <clears throat> throughout the day. I mean, I can see him sitting at the table. Spitting. And then right when he's kind of getting ready to spit, like, oh, here's your bowl, here you go. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe we can tell him, instead of making bubbles in your mouth, you can make a, make it with a real bubble thing that I'll give you at the end of the day if you stop spitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. It's, it's going to be the spit saver is what it's going to be called. The spit saver. Does he do it in anger or is it just he just yeah, has to smell? Yeah, he's mad. Oh. He's yeah. mad because he doesn't want to hear no. He doesn't want me to stop him with something that he's not supposed to be doing. Or, uh, it's either spit or throw. He likes to throw stuff. Hey, he likes to bite. How old is he? He's one of my favorite oh, <laughs> That's also another learning opportunity is to teach him what to do when he gets mad. Yeah. yeah. So, like, we're going to get into that later in some of the other sessions. Um, especially when we do the one on emotions, but teaching him a replacement behavior for the spitting of yeah. what to do when he's mad is also something yeah. else we can embed in as a learning opportunity, which is something you can teach all the kids because they all need to know what to do when they're mad, even though you're really targeting yeah. the spitter. Yeah. Exactly. And well, so he, he, he knows, kind of, sort of, but, you know, it's just the practice. Part. Yeah, it's just yeah. their impulse. To yeah. And then two, if you actually giving them that outlet of, okay, well, that's what you want to do. Here's where you can do it. Mm -hmm. And so allowing it, it might take some of that drive for him to do it out. Because he's like, okay, yeah. well, that's not, not fun anymore. <laughs> yeah, the Red Bulls. And, and it's interesting, I was telling her, too, at the beginning of class, that um, his mom has been there when he's done that. And she's like, <laughs> Yeah. Jeez, yeah. thanks for giving them all that attention. Yeah. Attention, Miranda. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you help the situation. And next time, in front of Miranda, then you go to Lori and say, well, Lori, high five. You kept your spit in your mouth. You're keeping your friend so safe. Uh, uh, that's and right. You do, yeah. That's I mean, right. you could be that model for that's them right. in front of them. She might be like, oh, okay. Wait a minute. And she might ask you, like, hey, why don't you do that? And like, oh, I was just giving them positive attention. You don't want to give that negative attention. It's okay to tell them that. It might be an aha moment. You know. She knows, but you know, when you get tired and you're stressed oh. out and, mm -hmm. and, and, and spending my beer on again like, for a week for yeah. work. Yeah. And, yeah, I know. Three kids on the watch. See, and you're thinking where she's coming from. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I have like to it. tell you a story. It's totally, I'm going down that sidetrack thing that we weren't going to do. So my uh, so my three year old grandson, which is Miles and Kara's beautiful son, he is our baby. It's true. So I said, Dominic, I'm sorry, but you have to have a timeout. Mimi, you no give me timeout. Only mommy and daddy give me timeout. And then he goes, remember? <laughs> Um, in the morning we have all the parents coming to drop kids off, so 
he greets everybody, which that I don't bother so much with, but more every other meal, he <laughs> yeah. does everything. So I was just, you know, setting a timer and said, hey, you know, we're going to sit for this long today, and, you know, high fives, good jobs after it, and then hopefully he'll get through it for a week, and then, you know, once he has a week down, then we'll increase the time and hopefully eventually have him sit through a meal. That's awesome. So, yeah. Struggle right now. <laughs> it's, cra it's crazy how the timers work so well for meals. I mean, I mean, we can stretch it out and it works awesome, mm -hmm. especially when they know, like, okay, after we're done, then we get to go outside. Yeah. You know, making sure it's something they really like. Well, like, mm -hmm. the, like, starting, like, such a small amount of time so mm -hmm. that you know for a fact they're going to be super successful mm -hmm. at first. Yeah. And then getting to a point where, like, wow, we were able to sit for one minute. Now mm -hmm. let's try it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and especially because all the other kids sit. She's <laughs> <laughs> so just like, why can't you do this? No. <laughs> He's three. So. But that's yeah. also an opportunity to praise, like Vanessa was saying, high five, mm -hmm. like, wow, you're sitting, you're sitting, and if he's yeah. sitting, wow, you're sitting. Yep. Yeah. yeah, my little girl, she does this. She's like, I'm doing a good job. I'm doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 My husband is working on his pyramid skills, but he, a while ago he was telling the kids, um, we're not cattle, we don't graze. We sit down for a meal, he's going on and on. Like, so now, every just today, he was telling me, he was like, gosh, did you know what? And he guys was like, what? He's like, cattle, they, they eat a long time. They take a hundred years to finish one meal. <laughs> I look at Gus and I'm like, mm -hmm. BS, buddy, but I don't want to tell you guys. <laughs> he's, a, he's a BSer. Yes, so. Did you guys want to share anything? Uh, but have, well, you, you guys should you should share your strategies we're thinking for uh, your little guy. I think this is good. Um, which which one? Which situation? Cleaning up. Cleaning Cleaning up. up. Okay. Yeah. So um, my my son, I'm working on picking up after himself because that's become a problem. He really wants mommy to do it all, and I know that that's actually one of his goals in his classroom as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to help out with the teachers with that. So one of the things that he really struggles with is putting toys away, but I've decided to try to embed it in different things uh, throughout the day. So for example, putting um, his plate in the sink in the morning for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, starting with that, putting his clothes in the hamper when he gets dressed in the morning for bath time. We've called it his family job, you know, because he also takes the baby's clothes to the hamper. So I'm trying to find these other ways to embed uh, picking up for, with, for, um, for himself and then really start tackling the toys. And we talked about uh, maybe starting with pick up three of the to Legos into the box first, because um, he's a dumper. And uh, it's, um, it's a challenge. And he struggles with transitions. Well, that's why having it specifically during transition times, I think, will actually help support that. So that's one. But that didn't give me ideas for my own kids, because too, like, um, we know we can do it. He's done it in class. So just being able to pick up and doing those things where it gives him that idea of, OK, I'm, now I'm putting my plate in the sink, meal time's done, on to the next. I'm picking up my toys. That's done. But I'm moving on to the next. So it's really giving that clear beginning, middle, and end. So. Like you know what's so interesting is each child is so individual. My, I had a little girl come this morning, and she was having a little bit hard time separating from mom. And one of the kids had dumped toys, and I was cleaning up. That's her favorite thing. I'm like, oh, Bob, come help me clean up toys. Oh, She's like, bye, mom, and she ran off. Because yes. that, that was her thing. That we motivated her. her. <laughs> like, they fall in love with us. That's a mess here. I mean, girl, that's so interesting. You guys, me, oh, you. that's oh, great. Yes. Good for you for knowing her, because that's perfect. Oh, like, knowing that little thing. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Penny, did you want to share yours? I have a funny story about that. I like it. So, I love to do dishes. I love to do dishes. And I, my mom, we had five girls, and I, I know I was her favorite. <laughs> she would always, Penny, do you want to do the dishes? Yes. <laughs> I love to do dishes, and I still do. I do my dishes, and then put them in the dishwasher and run the dishwasher. Wow. I like just it. Just for the enjoyment. I just, it's so relaxing to me. It's like a hot bath. I like it. I like it. I like it. Like it. Like it. Like it. Like it. it is. It's just like I am. It's just soothing. See, my mom wanted me to do the dishes, and I never would. But she gave me something that was highly motivating. It was this pair of rubber gloves, with these little strawberries on it, and I love those things. And so I would do the dishes. So it was like motivated me. My favorite. I wear those gloves. Michelle Silverstein poem is the one about 
getting out of doing the dishes, do you know it? Because he says something like, my mom wanted me to do the dishes, but I broke a dish, so I don't have to do oh. the dishes. <laughs> 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 Did you want to so, share your I just, you know, my week changes every week when I'm focused on. Mm -hmm. So this week I had a little 11-month-old uh, baby that was sick for 10 days, mother held him. So now he cries when he lays down and he screams to the top of his lungs and he will not go to sleep. So yesterday was a horrible day um, for this little guy. And then today he screamed all the way through morning nap. And I'm talking an hour and a half later. Ugh. I went and got him out of nap and he didn't take morning nap. So today he slept for an hour and a half. Yesterday he didn't sleep at all. So I have this really good friend who's been in daycare for a long time. And she says to me, you need to go in, you open the door, and you say, you are just fine. Miss Penny is right here. Mm -hmm. Shut the door. Watch the clock. If he's still screaming, open the door. You are just fine. Miss Penny is right here. Shut the door. And then he will go to sleep. Because he's going to know that I'm here, but I'm not coming in there. And I'm not going to pick you up. And I'm not going to touch you because that is motivating what he's wanting. He's wanting me to come in. And he, in his little mind, when I touch him, he's going to say, oh, there she is. I'm out. So it's just going to escalate that. So I'm not going to have eye contact, I'm not going to look at him, I'm just going to open the door and just tell him I'm right here, and I'm going to shut the door, and then I'm just going to move on down the road, and then I'm just going to keep doing that, and he's just, and we're just going to work through this. The other thing, too, you could think about trying is just, if he wants that fit, because I always find, like, once they're sleeping in your arms, what wakes them up is that setting them down yep. piece. So just rubbing their back and not saying a word to them, and then as soon as they fall asleep, walking away, and then maybe trying it again. Um, it's hard, though, especially if they've been sick and they're kind of out of their element. That makes it difficult. Was he a good sleeper before him? Like, oh, yes, nice? he was perfect. Mm -hmm. He was right on the money. I'm not kidding. He was just uh, an, actually at 8.30 and 11.30. Um, do you think he'd be too young to phase up the morning nap? Yes, he is, because yeah. he was a little bear. Oh, yeah. Yesterday was awful, awful, awful. And today, through, he missed morning nap, and he was just a little a bear. Mess, yeah. He's a mess. And he's usually very delightful, and smiles, and laughs, and loves, and I mean, you know, but he's just grumpy, and he's just crying, and he's upset. Is he wanting to be held constantly, or just like? Oh, yes, he wants held so constantly. So that's what, when he was sick. So it's yes. just gradually, because I, like, when I have kids that have a hard time separating, it's their first day in the brand new center, I just keep them like, near me, but not holding them, and just build that trust that I'm right here. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm here for you, but I can't hold you all day. And, yep. But well, building he, that trust so they He know loves that. me. I mean, he doesn't want to leave. You know, he yeah. cries when mom comes to leave. He doesn't, he so wants to So it's just kind of leave. a reset. He needs a little yeah, reset. He's just, just, a just, like he's just, he's just out of He's just out of schedule or whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's hard. So that's all I'm, I'm going to work on it. Well, thank you guys for sharing that. I think it's cool to see, hear everyone's ideas, especially with different situations, because there's so many right ways to do it. It's kind of cool. We all get ideas for each other. From each other. So what's next, this goes with handout 12.5, some ideas, but evaluating, so the team collect data to be sure that the child is learning the new skill. So if we don't take data, we don't know. If there's no progress or regression in the skill, so then we're going to look at it and say, okay, this isn't working, we need to come up with a new plan and create a new one and try it all over again. So this is about monitoring outcomes. It informs us of the interventions working by the child outcomes and the adult outcomes. So making sure that it's working for us too, making sure that we're, we're seeing what we want to see and the child is happy as well. Uh, it should be reviewed on a daily basis to drive current intervention strategies and adult response. So every two to four weeks, the team should review current criteria and child-adult outcomes. 
So if we're going to be looking at this every day and you are going to be taking data on it, it has to be something that's really, really easy. You're not going to be taking notes at circle time and wow, you made eye contact, I'm going to write that down. Not going to happen. It's got to be something really, really easy to do. Um, so I really like this. It's called a behavior rating scale. Uh, it doesn't require tallying, counting on a stopwatch or a clock or anything. It's really simple. Uh, it's one time per, per routine, collecting data in less time. It's less time consuming, and it results in more accurate data. Effectiveness of the intervention strategies are visually identifiable. It makes it super, super easy. It's that sheet with all those numbers on it. And at first, you look at it, and it's kind of overwhelming. But once you look at how easy it is to use, it's pretty awesome. And it, it, I think it would work great in the toddler classroom or even for younger kids and older kids. So kind of looking, this is going to be kind of your scale. So the child is independent, level four, kind of like Brooke was saying. Adult points, gestures, models, verbally direct, that it would be a three. Partial physical assistance and maybe a little bit of hand over hand and two. And a one, 100% physical hand over hands. And zero if the child refuses or if they weren't there that day would do uh, no data. But kind of using that as your scale and looking at it, so you would kind of look at it and you would say, okay, oh, oh no, you're okay, you're okay. So criteria, the number of consecutive days before decreasing the level. So remember, as we're gonna be teaching this skill, we're gonna know that they're gonna need less and less help. So you kind of can choose how many days. So like you guys were saying with the timer, we were gonna do you know, 30 seconds for a week or with meal times. You're, you you kind of decide how long you're gonna do each day and then you start, you start taking track of it. Go to the next slide. So, this is how you're going to score it. Four independents give a general direct direction. Child responds and completes task. I'm not even touching. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, what's the name earlier? I'm telling you. Reinforce they going to score four. No response or inappropriate response. Here's where that waiting time Brooke was talking about. You're going to wait five seconds, then you're going to do the gesture, point, verbal, or model. Wait five seconds, come down here, partial physical assistance. Wait five seconds, full physical assistance. So really making sure we're getting that wait time in. So just like she was saying, there's a hierarchy. So once you go down, that would make you decide which score would be for the child. So really looking at that. That's the hardest point. You're okay, you can sit down here. That's the hardest part for me is that wait time. I'll think I'm doing five seconds. It's not five seconds, it's more like two. So really counting in your head is sometimes important if you think you're rushing that. Brooke does seven seconds and she does it so nice. I'm like, yeah, how does she do that? But it, it does, some people it feels like forever. So Joey, Joey will gain his peers' attention using the touch and talk strategies. So right here, there, here's every day, so he was kind of at a one. Then we can see that these strategies are obviously working. Now, if he was right here, a one, 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 obviously we need to go back and look at our embedded learning opportunity and decide to change it. But how easy is that, really looking at it? I mean, you in your head can say, well, that was really easy. He got it today. He's super independent. That's so easy to score. That's easy to score for. You could say, man, I saw Molly had to really get behind him and use both of her hands to make him throw his plate in the trash. Score him a one. It's super easy to use. So these are just some additional data collection options. I know Molly and I had like wrote down what we did, what we were kind of seeing and we're doing tally marks. You can do that, you can do a checklist, time sampling, a scatter plot. We've even had um, some parents that actually were like, kind of like, really, they're doing that? And um, in our, my first two years here, we actually brought a video camera in the classroom and just kind of put it off to the side so the parents could actually see how their child was behaving in the classroom. And it was actually powerful because us as adults can kind of really pull back and look at how we were reacting and how we could change. So it, I think videotaping is really powerful sometimes too. That's such a great idea too, to not have like, you know, especially if you're getting pushback from a parent that's saying, oh, are you sure you're seeing, you know, I mean, like that would be really good because it's very visual. It's so powerful. So my mom um, was the director of West Area First. So they have four different departments. Um, for Jefferson County bus drivers, and she's the director for all of West Area, so it's all Conifer, Evergreen, all up in the mountains, and they get a lot of situations on the bus, hence why Brooke and I are probably going to be training them here soon, and she is reviewing videotapes all the time, because parents are like, oh, my kid would never do that. She's like, here's the videotape, here's the videotape, here's the videotape. You're buying that seat because they cut it, here's the videotape. 
So she's constantly having to use that. But I do think it's really powerful <laughs> in a classroom because, too, as a teacher, sometimes we don't realize we're even doing something. So it's kind of a nice technique, too. And two, a lot of times you see on these videos, the kids and the teachers aren't quite acting themselves with the a cameraman in there. But if you just have a camera off to the side, it's not as intrusive. Um, I know Brooke and Molly had a guy in there, and didn't he have like the big thing, and he was kind of all over the place, and it's kind of a little much for the kids, especially it's a small room. Um, just to comment on that, we actually did that with our daughters for doing dishes, because they would either fight constantly, or they would mess around. So we're like, okay, we're going to videotape you doing dishes because you take two hours, and then you're going to sit and watch the videotape. And they did dishes really fast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> two hours, that's a lot of That's funny, that's two hours of watching. That's the thing. Like, that. just take the dishes that's, over to Kenny. He has to say, yeah. oh, yeah. that's the thing. Right? Now you just get Kenny to the idea she's going to watch a video oh, for two hours. <laughs> additional websites and resources you guys have, but I wanted to show you on the iPhone that's really, really cool and I think would be really powerful. Um, how I found it, I don't know, but I'll, I'll send it to you guys. But I was just kind of Googling different things. But it's Maryland State Department of Education, so if you just went ahead and Googled that, you would find it. But if you parents wanted some ideas for embedded learning opportunities, you can look at it and they have meal time, play time, bath time, bedtime. So you can click on any one that you want to do. So if you're looking for bedtime routines, you can scroll, you can decide if you want it whichever age you want to do. You can click on the age, and then you can go down, and you can keep going down a little bit. Is this, is this on here? Um, no, this is something I found. So keep going down, Brooke. And then right here, if you click, click here to download an edible handout of this age range's bedtime activities, interventions, and tips. It'll actually make one, you can save it, and then Brooke will pull it up, but it actually makes a personalized handout for your parents. So you can write their name on it and say, you know what, this is something we're doing. I think it would be great for you guys to do at home. And it gives you tips and strategies to embed these practices at home. And all it's doing is not changing their routine. Like I said, it's just enhancing it. But you can, and two, I think this is great for parents because they can see if what their expectations are of the child, if they're age appropriate or not. You know, so if they're expecting them to independently brush their teeth at three, they're going to have cavities when they go in, you know what I mean? But it's really good for them to see. It's, it's really powerful, I think. Um, and it's good for me, too, because my Everett has this vocabulary that is just amazing. We actually just watched a video of him last night reading the spooky old tree with his brother. And he's got this tiny little voice, and he's a spooky old tree, and it's so cute. And the way I'm talking to him, I just want to jump through that camera and shake myself. I'm like, you're talking to him like he's six, and he's just a little tiny guy. But I just, because he's got that higher level of vocabulary, I treat him that way, and so I really have to watch that with him. But I think this is really, really cool tool, but it goes all the way up to five years, so um, I think it's a really nice handout. You can make all kinds of different do you Do you have the website that we um, So if you guys want to write it down, it's Maryland State Department of Education, and if you just Google um, embedded learning opportunities, it'll pull it up. It okay. says it's O-L-M-S. O L M S dot C T E dot J H U dot E D U. It has a forward slash O L M S two forward slash one zero six three four. I think they should have made it easier. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Yes. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and two, I, I'll send you guys a link. I'll send you guys a link so you guys don't have to try to think about it. Um, but yeah, so there's some more other things on here that you can use that are in your handouts. So just more ideas and stuff. I wonder where a lot of those videos came from that we watched. The the plus five. And there's more ideas on there of different opportunities if you kind of click through them. Sometimes it's hard to find, but 
I was able to find some other ones. So if you're looking for certain ideas, um, there's some other ones that are on there that you can just take a look at as well. So major messages, teaching targeted goals and outcomes requires planning, implementing, and evaluating. So we can keep con continuing to do that because as they're mastering them, they're going to get better and better. It's essential that the child and caregiver are engaged in embedded learning opportunities which should be offered throughout the day across all environments. Appropriate supports and positive reinforcement should be available for children or families to achieve their goals and outcomes. This will increase the rate of success leading to independence and progress monitoring is critical. And two, this is when you guys are looking at something that's highly motivating, especially if the kid's new to you, use that pathways, find out what they're really interested in. And if you find something that they really like at your house or in your practice, definitely tell the parents. We've told mom and dad, oh, they're really into these magnet towels. Like, really, they like that? They hate building. I have no idea. And so that can be powerful for them to know some high motivators too. Um, so I will give you guys um, a couple minutes to do thought seeds. If you guys want more time, let me know. And then we'll do quality improvement and um, have you guys do your evaluations too. Quality improvement. The winner of this really amazing puzzle is Miss Molly. Yay. She won. Congratulations, Miss Molly. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. Okay. All right. So, what did we like today? What did we like today, everybody? All of it. I like the layout. You like the seating? I do. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I like the seating. I, like I, like I, like <laughs> I feel more connected to everybody. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, all right. And the brownies. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like the forms to use to write so I can write out for each of my kiddos exactly what I like that too, and I didn't know what it was called, so I went back and I seen this little thing that said behavior rating scale, but I don't know if that's really what it's called. The E L O I glance. Was it this one? Yeah. yeah. The, I just was like trying to figure it out really fast because I wanted to write it on this. <laughs> behavior rating scale is one where you're tracking, like that with, the numbers. with the numbers. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. And if anyone wrote on theirs and you want a clean copy, 
to make copies, just let me know and we can. Oh. You want one? Yeah. I would like to. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'll just make some for you. Well, I know Annie, you do. Pictures. Clean. I like the things. Oh, I want mine clean too. I want <laughs> the back of it. or your home daycare, they have no idea, they just think you're playing and watching kids all day. But. And it's hard to teach that. Yes. Yeah. I have a lot of experience, but the girls I work with don't necessarily. Right. It's like, how can you just give them all the knowledge, you know, it's like you just got to jump in and learn it, <laughs> but they can't. Well, and I think sometimes, <clears throat> and I'll just speak for myself as a home provider, that you're doing a lot of these things, mm -hmm. but we didn't really have the verbiage before to describe what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's why when I started this session today, I was yeah. saying you are already you're doing, doing all it. these things. Mm -hmm. But it's powerful for you guys to have words on it and verbiage. So when someone is watching you, your mom says, wow, that works so good, you can relay that back to them and say, well, I'm doing it for a reason, and this is the reason why. Mm -hmm. This is There's a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. Because once you start kind of giving them the verbiage, then they got to start thinking of, well, if they're putting reason behind it, maybe I need to do the same. Right. You know, and if they're like, well, I don't know why I'm doing that, then maybe they shouldn't do it. So it's kind of good for them to think that way. Mm -hmm. And, too, it, it's going to broaden even more what you do. Like I said, you'll, you'll see where you'll be like, oh, now I'm getting creative, and I can hit back and in that kid with this mm -hmm. one thing. Yeah. So it can become really powerful. Well, and I like how we can cover the whole group. You know, mm -hmm. and like you said, not just singling out one child, mm -hmm. but it's going to impact the whole, the whole right. group. And for me, <clears throat> it's from like my sweet little Timmy, mm -hmm. you know, all the way up to Lily, whose skills just need to be reinforced because she's got elbows. Yeah. yeah. Tap, 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 <laughs> tap, tap. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> <laughs> tap, 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 tap. <laughs> But for the new teachers, I mean, kids kids are going to make us all better parents, better teachers, because they're going to demand that we step up and figure these things out. So even as I'm struggling right now with things that are going on in our classroom that was relatively smooth, it's falling apart. And so I'm having to reevaluate, try new things, figure out what's going on. And so in the end, they're going to make us better teachers. Mm -hmm. I just told Kara this morning, I cannot thank her enough, or you two, for this class. Mm -hmm. I am not kidding. I have so much knowledge from just these few short weeks that I go home and I use them. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited. And I'm, you know, my parents see it. They're like, wow, Penny, what's that new thing on your wall? <laughs> oh, and I'm great. like, come in, I'm going to show this <laughs> to you. And... It's wonderful. It's, powerful. it's very, very powerful. And I just love it. And I'm so excited. I can't thank you guys enough. I hope you do this every year. <laughs> yeah. Just for a refreshment for me. Yep. And I it really is true. Do. Like you come in with a different perspective because now it's something different is going true. on. You got a new mm -hmm. kiddo that's got yes. something different. Mm -hmm. So you can't well, even expect it to be. And you're something. coming in at best practices. And that's yes. what yeah. really hits me too. Yeah. Yes. Some of my friends in the neighborhood started calling me Pyramid Power. <laughs> <laughs> such a long time that Molly will even contest to this. I, 
I wish I would have had a refresher on some of these things. I'm like, oh yeah, I really wasn't doing that. So you could just, it's such a nice refresher to think about like, oh, we should have done that, we should have done that, you know, and really thinking about it. And two, sometimes you're like, oh, I'm doing that. But really, if we use some of these resources and tools and just kind of check back in with ourselves, it's going to be really powerful. So, so I wish we had that reading skill last year. I would have had some good ideas with that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Learning things. That's right. Yeah. Tools in your toolbox. That's right. You know, and I think about the kids that I had my first, very first year, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> 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 my heart was in the right place. But I don't have the skills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. oh, okay. All right. Anything to improve? Those videos were a little crazy, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they really improved them, though. <laughs> Anything else? I hope my home never sounds like that one school. Oh, it's loud. Oh, yeah. Way too loud for me. So loud. <laughs> and there, that's I maybe some that when you have a full classroom, <laughs> even if they're all engaged and they're just playing, it, yeah. it does get loud. We have That's our afternoon class. We just have some friends like they're talking loud. Well. Yeah. yeah. They're totally so loud. And the older, in my experience, is the older they get, like the louder. The louder, like my young fives class was wow. <laughs> they just were the best class ever, but wow, are they loud? <laughs> you know, my uh, our middle uh, grandson goes to Primrose two days a week. Oh, right. Uh -huh. And so they say that, that, you know, they're just so excited to see each other, you know, and he's four. And so he just comes in there, and, he's just, and my son is like, Mom, literally, he's like this. And he's like, I'm Spider-Man! <laughs> <laughs> and so they're all somebody, you know, and it's like, wow. Because <laughs> they come over to our house, and it's all quiet. Good morning. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's good to have both.